my husband and I have been married for a year and we recently started talking about when we should start trying to get pregnant. I don't want my kids be on a daycare. So we both agree that we should hire a nanny. That would be the ideal. The problem is all this husband nanny stories that I hear on the tabloids. So my question is, if I hire a ugly nanny, am I in the clear? <laughs> and how unattractive are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> You know, if, if only it was that simple. Um, you know, the nanny thing's a real thing. Uh, I've done a lot of divorces that are caused by what I call in the book the nanny fascination. Um, and what it is, is, is a nanny is a woman who's a lot, usually for a husband, like the wife was when he met her, right? She's, she's a little younger. She's got a life outside of the house, you know, that she goes to. She's not familiar with him. She might even be impressed with him because she sees him every day, you know. She doesn't see him every day, but she has some time away from him, right? So there's a, there's a certain independence that she has. Plus, the kids like her. You know, that's sort of a, a function of the nanny. So, and, and the husband gets to be in charge of the nanny in a way that he's not in charge of his wife. And the relationship, because of that, is really, really simple. So um, I would say do your best to keep the difference between you and the nanny as small as possible. And that's great for you, too, because that's going to get you out there. That's going to get you remembering who you are and having the difference between you and that nanny be, be, be totally disinteresting. And remember, you're the one your husband fell in love with. You know, you're the one who has an advantage over the nanny any day of the week. Thank you. Uh, let me give you another way you could look at this, probably. <laughs> uh, you're going to need a nanny if you don't want to lose your career. So I'm, this is what I would do. I would hire your Aunt Jocinda. <laughs> Aunt Rita, big Aunt Rita. You just want a big, a large relative <laughs> in your house watching the baby. Relatives, you can trust them. They have a vested interest. They're related to the child. And that hire her. I'll do that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Nico. Nico's thinking about popping the question. Nico, what's holding you back? Hey, how's it going, guys? Um, so my girlfriend and I have been together for about nine months now. Um, she's awesome. I, I love her. We're both happy. Our, our relationship is so healthy. It's amazing. Um, and so now I think I'm ready, or sh if I should be ready, to take the next step in proposing to her. Um, like I said, I love her to death. And uh, it's not that I have doubts about us or her. It's just that <laughs> the divorce rates these days are, are terrible. Um, my parents defied the odds of that, and they're still together, and they're happy, and I want that. Is there a safe way to do this before I walk down the aisle? I mean, the good, I'll give you good news and bad news. The good news is you've got a great relationship role model in your parents, right? They're happily married. So you have to have picked some habits up along the way, you know, of watching their relationship and how they interact with each other. So they've given you a real gift with that, okay? The bad news is this. Marriage is like the lottery. You're probably not going to win, okay? But if you win, what you win oh boy, is so... you heard a lot of women with that one. <laughs> it was women went, what? But here's the thing, here's the thing. <laughs> If you win, what you win is so good, okay, that it's absolutely worth buying a ticket. It's absolutely worth giving it a ticket. Yeah. Okay? I agree with everything he said. Here's what young people never incorporate in the decision to get married. See, the reason it's bliss right now, you don't have any bills together. You don't have any children together. You ain't got a mortgage together. You have none of the problems of real life yet. You've got to incorporate that into your thinking because it's going to happen. Marriage is work. It's work, man. There's going to be days you wish you had never met this person. <laughs> it's going to be days you go, what the hell was I thinking? <laughs> because, man, you're going to get some bills and some kids and the game changes. But you can grow with the person with communication. But just hang in there, man. Yeah. Because you go, you go, you go... You're gonna get married. <laughs> yeah, you're gone. <laughs> I can see it on your face. You're gone. <laughs> hey, folks, listen. If you're in my office, uh, it's already too late. It comes out April 10th. And uh, Holt Publishing 
is giving everybody in our studio audience a free copy. <laughs> Folks, big hand for James Sexton. I've been married for eight years, and I love my family more than anything, but I feel like I'm constantly working. I work all day at my job. Um, I get home, I have to go pick up my daughter from school, I take her to ballet, and I make them dinner, and I get them ready for school the next day, and by the end of the day, I'm extremely exhausted. My husband's a really good man, but sometimes I feel trapped and tired. Do you have any advice? The fact that you're in touch with that feeling and you're open enough about it to in a room full of people to say it is tremendous, and that puts you a step ahead of most people, because most people in your situation, and, and I guarantee there are other women in this room who feel the same way as you, mm -hmm. because being a mom is incredibly hard work. It's the hardest job, you know? <laughs> and, and being a good partner to another person is a really hard job, whether it's a husband or a wife, right? So you've got a lot of jobs. So here's what I'd say to you, a couple things. Take a cue from divorced people, okay? There, there's not a lot of good things about being divorced, but one of the things that's good about being divorced is divorced people have time with their children and they have time away from their children, okay? They have their children for the weekend and then their children go to the other person maybe for the weekend, or at least they have a night where the other partner takes their kids out for dinner and they have a night to themselves, okay? You can make that happen in your day-to-day -day life. Divorced people shouldn't have all the fun when it comes to that, okay? <clears throat> And, and I'm not talking about doing a girl's night out once every three months where you go out and you, have, you know, let your hair loose. That's a great thing, there's a place for that. But you know, if, if I didn't work out ever and then I went to the gym for six hours one day, it's not helping. <laughs> right. It's not gonna, you know, if you do 20 minutes a day, a couple days a week, it's gonna make a big difference. So what I'd say is work, you know, having, and you said your husband's a good man, right? Yeah, and and really so if he's a good man, he wants to support you. He wants to be there. He wants you to be the best you you can be, the woman he fell in love with. So what, what you might want to say to him is, look, on Wednesday nights, I need you to do the homework. I need you to do the dinner with the kids. And I'm going to go down to the, the coffee shop down the street with that magazine that, that came that I've been dying to read when the kids went to bed, but I ended up falling asleep before them. It can just be going someplace for an hour and just being yourself. And trust me, if your husband's the good man that you said he is, when, when you come back refreshed, and you come back feeling good, he's gonna be thrilled. He's gonna be happy. Thank you. 100%. I like that. All right, where, where's Morgan? You have a money question? <laughs> yeah, hi. So my last boyfriend threw money around like crazy. He had a fancy car. He wore only designer clothes. Uh, he wined and dined me at all the fanciest restaurants, most expensive restaurants in town. And it was really fun for a while until I found out that he was deeply in debt and was living off of credit cards. And my credit got badly damaged in the process. Now, I've been with a new guy and it's starting to get serious and he's building his business. And so he's moving from the ground up and I really believe in him. I believe he's going to be successful but I am a little nervous, and I'm wanting to know how I can protect myself in a relationship where money is concerned. You know, other than cheating, uh, money issues are the major reason why people split up. That's why people end yeah. up in my office. Um, so I will definitely say to you that, that it's great your radar is up about that stuff and that you're paying attention. Um, if it's a new enough relationship, now's the time. It's like the engaged couple, you know, now's the time to start these good habits. Think about if when you first bought a car, from the day you bought it, you did all the preventative maintenance the mechanics told you to do. That car, you could have that car forever, right? Yeah. So early in this relationship, while he's starting his business, while you're starting this, this partnership together, before you're married, before you move in, before you have the stress that comes with kids and, and a mortgage and all those other things, now's the time to start having financial conversations with him. Now's the time to say to him, tell him that story. Tell him what happened. Tell him that you were burned by this other person. And maybe explain to him that, listen, I'm more impressed right now by stability and responsibility. That's sexier to me yeah. than flashy cars. Yeah, it is. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's also going to show him that he can share with you and talk to you openly about money and talk to you openly about his money stresses and your joint partnership. And it's so much easier to keep things on track than for things to go completely off track and then try to drag them back the other way. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Thank you. That's a real partnership. Thank you very much, James. Thanks, Again, great segment.